It will also work if I need one wheel. So, one wheel still working here. One wheel stopped. Other wheel. Other wheel working. So one wheel is working better than the other wheel. And if, if you can get a comparative test like that, it's really useful because it means you can you can do experiments and find out why one wheel is working and the other one isn't. See, this wheel isn't working; but it's just working, isn't it? Both wheels are working fine. This wheel and just so if you charge it up, it will run for. Very long. If I put paper on that, it doesn't stick. See, but No, don't touch the silver paper. is a sheet of plastic, any, any plastic will do, and you can make it any size. Under the plastic, I've used see-through plastic, so you can see through it. Underneath it, there's two lots of kitchen foil. One's connected to the plus, and one's connected to the minus. And I've mounted it on cardboard just to uh, give it a bit of stiffness and flatness. And you connect the plus to there and the minus to there, or vice versa. And you can use it for printing actually. I've got some things I've printed using this technique. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. Because you can use it to hold down stencils. because it's sort of glue that you can switch on and off. So this is... Uh, that's an advertisement I did for a clog dance group. And that's green and gold, which were the Tudor colours. You get very nice, even paint distribution because of the electricity. So is it like spray painting? Yeah. You just you can buy spray cans in pound shops. There's another one. Repertoire spelt wrong. I think it's got an R in the middle, it should have. So that's a shame. It's another broken ankles one. And Here's a stencil. Oops. Yeah, that's what the stencil looks like. And you can get the stencil to stick better if you 
Uh, make it of something, put strips of metal across the top and then just have a one metal sheet underneath and then make that the underneath one plus and the, the stencil minus. Okay, okay so that's that foil in there should just come out. So that goes right the way round inside. And now taking it out, you can see that on the outside there's two bits of foil, one there, and one there, with a gap. See, they don't touch. Gap is between the two pennies. And the, this bit of bent wire just touches this bit of foil. See, that's one of the combs. And this piece of bent wire touches that piece of foil. Then the neutralizing brushes go from, one of them goes from there to there. Um, the same on the other side goes from there to there and they don't need to touch. Right, so that's touching that that's touching that, that's touching that, and that's touching that. That's pretty much all you need to know. It comes to bits like so. That's made of two CDs. And the only really exotic thing is this 3mm axle I got from a gearbox. So it goes right the way through. Like that. As long as you've got the axle, you can make the thing. So they you can spin them like that without them touching. They're really close but they don't touch. Now to do that, you've got to stick a CD onto some kind of bearing so it doesn't wobble. And that is actually quite difficult. And, and the way, see, virtually no wobble. The way I've done that is you get a pulley wheel, and I've got some of this plastic tube, and I put three bits of blue tack on, and you you get a CD. And I've got a CD. Here. CD goes on there, and you have to sand the paint side off with the metal stuff. So that's going on on the blue tack. And you try and get it in the middle, and that will now wobble if I spin that. See that wobbles badly, really badly. So what you do is you you adjust the blue tack. Just by pushing it. And that, actually that wobbles a bit worse, but you just go on and on adjusting the blue tack until it doesn't wobble. And then you glue it down there. So to make these you have to cut out 48 little pieces of this. You could use kitchen foil, but it's too fragile, really.
anyway you have to do that 48 times gets pretty dull and you need to stick that onto that side with super glue like that okay that's pretty much it right so all these bits of bent wire are glued onto the bottom of a plastic bottle the reason I've used the bottom of the bottle is the plastic's much thicker so if you use hot glue it won't melt the bottle and all together you need four bits of wire you need two bits for the two charge collecting combs it doesn't matter what wire you've used I've used fairly thin wire because it's easy to bend and then you need two more bits of wire to hold the axle right, where's the axle gone? so the axle goes across the middle like that and the ends of these two bits of wire make the neutralizing brushes and in fact I sellotape very thin bits of wire to the ends of the brushes because then it's easier to adjust to get the brushes brushing the wheel. And you have to be careful that the when you go like that, you don't your hands don't touch the charge collecting combs. They they can touch touch the brushes because they're ever, everything touching the brushes is neutral but you mustn't your hands mustn't touch the cones